Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Glad you could join me today. Uh, I've taken a few weeks off to um, enjoy the, and welcome um, our daughter, Georgia, to the family. And it's been awesome to be home and, and just see, you know, capture some moments that, to be honest with you, I didn't get with Clea because um, I was, had to travel quite a bit her first month of life. And so it's great to see um, <laughs> Clea, how excited she is to be a sister and just kind of, you know, spend those precious moments with Georgia. And I'm not going to talk about that today. I actually have another episode planned um, in the future talking about some of the hopes that I have for my kids and all kids when they go to school. But um, today, I actually just wanted to record a podcast, um, actually because of my kids, and thinking about some of the things that I wish I could have saw of my dad that he wasn't able to capture because didn't have the technology and the access. And so I think some of the stories that, you know, I would have loved to hear or would love to have access to, I don't. But now that we have all this technology with the ability to podcast, blog, all of these things, um, I think it's really important to share our stories, you know, not just for the present moment, but in the future. And um, to be honest, I'm going to record this uh, episode and then I'm going to email it to my daughters. I've talked about this a lot in the past that I actually have email accounts set up for my daughters that they'll open in the future. Um, probably not at least until they're 18 where I send them little messages. And uh, the reason I wanted to record this today is because I actually um, just lost an aunt. She was actually about a hundred years old and her name was uh, Thea Sula. Thea means aunt in Greek. And someone who was really close to me and the when I was a kid uh, probably about Kalia's age to be honest with you uh, maybe maybe a year older I had this wonderful opportunity to go to Greece and with my family and uh, you know see my relatives and I, I always think about that because you know both my parents immigrated um, to Canada from Greece because they basically left a, a country that the just was not a, a a place that they had many opportunities at the time. And so they decided to venture out on to the other side of the world and move to a, to Canada because they saw more opportunity there at the time. And just thinking about that journey, how uh, crazy it is to think about that when they left, who knows if they'd ever talk to their family again, they didn't have access to the same technology that we do now. And, and for them to, you know, really kind of look at creating some opportunities, but, to go back and see, you know, uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and relatives and just see um, a different side of my family, you know, as a kid was something I really appreciated and got to play with cousins that I still uh, connect with. And I actually connect with more now because like I said, we have access to technology. And so I met my aunts and my uncles, um, you know, my, my parents, brothers and sisters and it was, that still live there during that time. And it was like a really great experience. And it was something that I actually remember even as a five-year-old, some of the adventures that we had. And I remember um, the aunts on my um, father's side and one in particular is Thea Sula. And what was really neat is that um, the last time I was in Greece um, as a kid was when I was five years old with my family. You know, my, my parents had actually went back there I went to see, you know, um, their, their brothers and sisters several times, but I actually didn't go back there until my thirties. And I went there, I was probably in about my seventh or eighth year of teaching. And I had this opportunity to go with my brother and a friend and go to visit. And it was absolutely amazing, um, to see my family and in particular, my Thea Sula, who just passed away. And I hadn't seen her since, you know, probably almost literally 30 years um, from when I saw her as a kid. And as soon as I got to Greece, there was this really interesting connection uh, that Thea and I had. And as soon as she saw me, she came up to me. And it was like a really weird thing at the first part. She actually would rub my Adam's apple. And she'd rub it and she just... Uh, it was just a weird thing. And, you know, it's just something that I didn't understand, but there was just something neat about it at the moment. And I'll, I'll get to why um, she did that in a little bit. But just immediately, even though I hadn't saw Thea Sula, and interestingly enough, she doesn't speak English and I don't speak Greek. And both of us, you know, have a little bit of the other language, very minimal. 
but we had this connection and we had this opportunity to just kind of be around each other. And I remember um, while I was there uh, in Greece, and this is before, you know, the ability to, uh, we, like, I think I had an iPhone at the time, it was a very early ver version. It was very expensive um, to call back to Canada. And I wanted to check in um, with my mom and dad while I was in Greece. And so this one afternoon, I actually went and hung out with the Asula. And it was just her and I. And it was weird because neither of us, you know, spoke the other's language. But we just sat there and just the presence of one another was amazing. We just sat there and had lunch together and never said anything for an hour. And just basically smile at each other. And I know it sounds weird. But there was just something, there was this connection we had that really stuck with me. And I remember specifically, uh, I was there um, at the house and I had to call home and I use these, you could buy these calling cards and they, you know, you'd, you'd pin it, you put a pin in and you could call and it was cheaper to call long distance. And so I remember actually calling and this is probably about 10, 15 years ago and I had an iPhone and she actually had a rotary phone in, in her house. And so I had to dial the number on the calling card and then put in the pin. The problem was that in this phone that she actually had, the first thing that came up is said, key in the pin, but you couldn't key it in because she had a rotary phone. And for those of you who remember, maybe some of you have no clue what I'm talking about, depending on your age, um, there's no buttons to press. You have to actually turn the rotary. And so I couldn't actually pin in this code. So I'm trying to communicate with her um, asking her if she actually has another phone. We don't have, we have this language barrier between us. And I said, Thea, phone, boop, 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 boop. Uh, and she, and we could not figure this out. We could not figure this out. And I just remember she was like saying, boop, 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 boop. And she's saying this over and over again. And I'm trying to get this rotary phone to actually take a calling card. So I actually never, it was just something I, I'll never forget this little moment we had this language barrier between us trying to figure out, is there any phone with buttons that I could actually push so I could call home? And of course, you know, didn't work there. She only had the one phone at her house. And um, then I just called from somewhere else. And just little moments like that were just really amazing and just something that I think about all the time. And I hope, um, you know, when my daughters watch this in the future, they'll probably have no clue what I'm talking about. Who knows where phones will be at this time. But I remember distinctly one day, I actually went out for a run in the morning and everyone was sleeping. And uh, when I left, and so I actually went out and it was so hot that day. Uh, but I tried to go up early in the morning because it was so hot in the afternoon, so hot, you know, even by 9, 10 p.m. or 8 a.m. I apologize. And I, I went really early. And it seemed like in the era, they live in Astros, Greece. It's on the seaside. If you can ever go, I really highly recommend it. It's one of the most beautiful places you can go, and it's, but it's not very busy. It's right on the, on the water. And I actually, when I got home from my run, everyone was up. And I sat beside my Thea Sula, and I remember she was rubbing my back. And she was just, just looking at me, just looking at me, and she started to rub my Adam's apple. And my brother, Alec, who speaks um, a lot more Greek than me, but that's not very much, like I don't speak much. He has a, a somewhat of an understanding. I saw that her, um, her and Alec started having a conversation while I was sitting there and she was rubbing my back. And um, actually who I'm named after is my uncle George. And my uncle George actually uh, passed away at, at, during the Greek civil war and and my Thea Sula is telling the story to my brother and telling about what happened that day. And she was the oldest in the family. And she actually sat there and my brother's translating the story as we go. And basically what had happened was my uncle had went out and went out and came home from the war. And he actually had a gun that went off into his stomach and my Thea is telling the story how she was there and didn't know what to do and she had and I know this is a horrible story but this is what my um my brother or my father and my Thea actually had had, had, had witnessed and it was so 
horrifying. And then she actually had shared that she was basically had shot himself in the stomach accidentally. And they were like, she didn't know what to do. So she's trying to put um, basically his, his guts, she, she said, inside. And they were just, and he had passed away right in front of her. And obviously this infected my father, this infected, you know, their family tremendously. And even though um, it was probably 30 years after his passing, uh, my dad still, my parents named me after the uncle to keep his memory alive. And so why I tell you this story is she's, I'm watching my brother listen. And then he started tearing up and I haven't seen my brother cry that often, to be honest with you. And it was kind of interesting. And what my Thea told her, told my brother was that she had lost her brother that day and how she's been so affected by it. And when she had saw me, she started rubbing my Adam's apple and she started and she saw that I looked and felt her brother in me. And when she saw me after I returned, you know, you know, 30 years later from when I was a kid, she had said, my brother is home. My brother is home. And I watched my brother cry. And then I understood our connection. I understood this connection we had. And we all were crying. And it was just a really powerful uh, moment and something I remember. And it, it was interesting because I, I understood a lot of things that didn't make sense at the time. Like, how could I just sit with someone and just not say anything and be so comfortable? And we had this connection. And so it was very hard to leave. And uh, my Theo was in her 90s, um, probably, or late 80s at the time. And so I left and uh, I was hoping I get to see her again. And um, about two years ago, I actually went back to Greece. I went to present at the conference there. And I was in Athens and I had the opportunity to go back and see my family. So I went, drove to Astros, but then I drove um, to a city about an hour away from Athens where my Thea Sula had now lived. And the reason she had lived there is because she needed care. And um, she struggled physically, but she also had dementia. So she didn't recognize people. Um, she's, you know, struggling with conversations. But I wanted to see her, obviously. And so I went there. And when I went to see her, um, her kids were taking care of her. And they kind of warned me, like, hey, just so you know, you're, you're a Thea Sula doesn't recognize people, doesn't actually, you know, remember a lot of things. So just don't, don't be offended or anything like that. I'm like, of course, I just want to see her, right? So as I sat with her, she looked at me and she didn't recognize me. And we sat there. And then she looked at me and she started rubbing my Adam's apple. And she said, my brother is home. My brother is home. And she saw again and she remembered me. Even though I didn't saw her, like I've probably only seen her four times in my entire life. And she remembered right away. And like I said, my aunt, uh, Thea Sula, doesn't speak English. I don't speak Greek, but there are a few words we can say. And she just kept rubbing my Adam's apple and she said, I love you. I love you. And it was really it was an incredible moment. I had that. And I know to say, I love you in Greek. And I said, Sagapothio, Sagapothia. And it was a really um, powerful moment. I'm glad that I said that. And I remember the first time when I saw her in my 30s, when she said, my brother is home. And I thought it was like that we had this connection. She just saw this familiarity. And when I saw her in my 30s, my dad was still alive. But when I saw her again, my dad had passed away. And it's interesting because there's little facial features that Thea has that my dad has that I saw. But my dad's hands were so massive. They were so thick. And I'm not even kidding. Um, for the American audience, he could actually take a loonie, which is a Canadian dollar. It's a very wide coin. He'd pull his, uh, his wedding ring off and he'd put a loonie right through his ring. That's how thick his hands were. And I remember holding her hands. And even though they're not the same size, they look just like my father's. And there was this connection just between our hands that I felt I was holding my father's hand. 
um, at the time that there's something different now that I saw her because I saw my father. And it's interesting because when I look at my own daughters, when and I know it's a weird thing to say, um, as babies, they look like my dad when he, you know, before he passed away, there's facial features. You know, my dad was bald, chubby face, kind of a baby looking face. And I see those things in her. And those connections we have to our family are really powerful. And so I just wanted to share this with you because I think these stories are important to who we are, not only as, um, ed as people, but educators, that a lot of these things define us. A lot of these moments uh, define that what we do. But I also, to be honest, you wanted to share this for my kids. And I wanted to share this so that they have these stories that in a way they could listen to them and they can hear about their their family because I think there's a lot of my history and my my family's history that I don't know because it was very hard to record and now we have this opportunity so I hope you got um, you heard something out of this that you may be connected with but I also want you um, to think about how we share our stories with our kids so they can hear them in the future long after our time in this world so thanks for taking time to listen I appreciate you Take care. Bye-bye.